then we'll do the math and figure this thing out. Firstly, we want to construct it. What, what do we want to construct? What type of commerce interval? 95%. That should tell you something, right? Okay. For the mean of IQ scores, the mean of IQ scores, that means the population IQ scores. So that means for mu. We're trying to find a commerce interval for, for mu. But these people are stuck. You see, they need to find out the sample first. They haven't taken any samples. So we're not actually going to be finding the confidence interval here. We're just going to give them the first step and say, you need to go out and take a sample of this many people. Are you with me on that? That's how you do it in real life. You say, well, I want to be within two points of the mean. Tell me how big my sample has to be. That's what you're going to do. Then you're going to find your sample, calculate everything, and you're going to know inherently that that confidence interval is going to be within two points of your population mean for 90, being 95% confident. Are you okay with this, folks? All right, great. Okay, assume the population standard deviation is 15. Is that important? That's probably pretty important because when we look up here, we're going to need sigma somewhere, right? We're going to need a critical value somewhere. Could you tell me right now what our critical value is? I hope so. Yeah, sure. It's based on your confidence level. We needed that. Also, we need our E. Now, it says a little bit further, I want the sample mean to be within two points of the population. What's that mean? I don't have mean, mean. What's it mean? I have the sample mean. I want it to be within two points of the population mean. Within two points means the maximum difference between them has to be what? Two. Has to be two. So what's my margin of error? Two. Now, the question, is it two? Is it 0.2 or is it 0 0.02? Are we dealing with proportions? Is that 2% or 2 points? If I had said 2%, we'd be dealing with proportions, and you'd be doing 0 0.02. Are you with me on that? I'm not dealing with proportions, so you have to get that out of your head. You are in two distinct sections here. You're either doing proportions, percentages, great, 0 0.02, right? It's going to say percent. Or you're going to be dealing with means. You don't change that to a decimal because it's not. It's not a percentage. It says points. So that two, that's two points. So let's go ahead and let's verify all this information. Can you tell me again, if we're trying to find out sample size, that's what this says, how big sample need to be. Tell me what my z alpha over 2 has to be one more time. And where are you finding that? Three. So 95% gives you 1.96. And our, and do we know our n yet? No, that's what we're trying to find. Okay, do we know our sigma? Great. Sigma stands for population standard deviation. It said that right up there, assume it to be 15. That's awesome. And last thing we need to know, what's your E? 0.02 or 2? Two. 2. 2 points. So be very, very careful, especially on a test. These problems are going to be worded really similarly, right? It sounds the same as the stuff we just did. It is the same. It's just you're in a different category. You're not dealing with proportions anymore. You're dealing with means. So the, the, the easy part about this is also the hard part about this. It's easy because this is literally identical to the last section, right? It's hard because it's almost identical to the last section. But there's differences in there. So let's go ahead and try to figure this stuff out. We got n equals, well, we're going to have z alpha over 2 times our sigma, all over our E, and then after that we're going to square it all. So let's fill out that formula. Go ahead, take 10 seconds, try to do it yourself. See if you can get that. Six, that's our critical value. Sigma, that's our standard deviation for the population. That's 15. We got that. Our E is 2 points, so we're going to put 2. We just cannot forget to square it. So how to do this in one fell swoop without rounding at all? Take 1.96 on your calculator, multiply by 15, press enter, divide by 2, press enter, then square it, press enter, and you'll get how much do you get exactly? I heard mumbling. What was it again? How many were able to find 216.9? Good for you. Okay. 
What's that mean about our sample size? I make the joke all the time. We're going to find 0 0.09 of a person. Say 216 of you, and your hand will answer this time. That's about 0 0.09. No, what's our sample size going to be then? Why not 16? It's too small. We need just a little bit more than that. You're not going to take part of a person, so you have to bump that up. If you get a decimal, you got to bump that up by one. So our sample size is going to be 217. Again, what this does for you, this says if you go out there with this information, and if you want to instruct a 95% confidence interval right now, you've got to go out and take 217 people, find out their IQ scores, and then that is going to, going to be guaranteed within two points of the actual population IQ score. Does that make sense? You're not going to be exactly sure what the population IQ score is, but you're going to be 95% sure it's within the range that you, you find out after you take your sample. We can't go any further because we don't have the sample mean here, right? It, it's not giving you that. We just found out what the sample had to be so they could go find that mean and then use the information. How many people understood this, this section? Good. Now I'll give you a little preview in the last minute that we have. Is it going to be common for you to actually know the population standard deviation? So I want you to think about what we're doing here, really. We're estimating the population mean, right? But it's assumed that you know the population standard deviation, which inherently you would need to know the population mean in order to do. Do you realize that? Population standard deviation is based on the mean. So how are you going to know the population standard deviation if you don't know the population mean? Probably not. This is a very rare case. Right? It's very rare that you're actually going to know that, the population standard deviation. So the next section, what we're going to do, this little preview, will be exactly the same as this. Only we're not going to be able to use the z-score. We can't because we're not going to know the population segregation. That's actually a more realistic case. We'll take a look at that next time.